Welcome to Seven Pot Club. I'm Rob. I grow hot peppers. In this episode, I'm going to get you caught up on the progress of my 2021 hot pepper grow season. If you like my music, stay tuned to the end of the video as I'll be premiering a new song I hope you'll enjoy. There's a lot to cover, so let's get started. At the conclusion of the previous grow season update, I was just getting around to removing the stumps of last year's in-ground plants. Now it was time to prepare the soil for this summer's occupancy. First order of business, get rid of weeds and plant debris. I like to use this tool to break up the top layer of soil and remove some of the larger weeds. Most of you know this as a garden weasel, but my off-brand version is called a hound dog. Then I broke out the trusty spade for some rapid turnover. That looked pretty good, but I wasn't done yet. Since I plant the same plot year after year with the same crop, I always like to add some soil amendments. This year I'm trying a product called Organic Garden Soil. It's an all-in-one mix including compost, peat moss, limestone, worm casings, and more good stuff. After working it into the soil, I evened it out with some raking. Okay, these beds were ready to go, except for the fishner to be added just before planting. Meanwhile, there were also indoor tasks to complete, like preparing plant tags for reuse. These tags are made from stainless steel and have lasted for many seasons. Since I grow many of the same varieties every year, some labels can be reused. But many others need to be removed and replaced, and that involves cleaning off the old glue. Otherwise, the old label won't adhere properly. Here's an example of that. So this year, I decided to give the tags a good soak in Dawn Platinum Dish Detergent to loosen up that gluey residue. Even then, it took a lot of scrubbing and a lot of time to clean these up. Meanwhile, out back, the plants were hardening off and the tarped pile of last year's potting soil was patiently waiting to be reused. Kaisa decided to check out the supplies in the garage. We had a brief cold spell the final week of May, so planting the ground beds was delayed until May the 31st, Memorial Day. After years of trial and error, I've determined that 17 inches apart is the best distance between plants. This gives each plant plenty of room to grow while also maximizing the available space. I measured and marked off the plant locations with chalk. Before I could commence with planting, I had to add the magic ingredient, Fishner Fish Manure Humus Compost. It has no unpleasant odor and it's packed with diverse microorganisms that are readily available to help plants thrive. I've determined from experience that one pound per plant, about two and a half cups, works well to feed the plant all season. So I set to work adding that amount in each location where a plant would be placed, as indicated by the chalk marks. In the process of completing this task, I was really surprised to discover that the fishner in some of the bags had a very different texture. I'm used to fishner being made up of small hard clumps with a consistency like putty. This new formulation is more like soil and retains visible pieces of the oat straw used in the process that transforms manure into compost. I reached out to Jim White from Fishner to find out more, and here's what he told me. We are now producing Fishner in Arizona, where they have the facilities to compost, bag, and ship the product in the volumes that we need. The formulation is the same, except the fish manure is trout manure instead of catfish manure. Catfish manure is no longer available because no one is now raising catfish in raceways. The formulation uses the same clay as the fish manure produced in Arkansas. The final product goes through a screening that breaks the product up more uniformly than the process used in Arkansas. The lab analyses of the products are basically the same. We have had no reports of any difference in performance. That's good to hear, as I find the new formulation to be a lot easier to work with. For comparison, here's the old version, and here's the new version. Next, I smoothed it all over with the rake. Then, I dug all the holes for the plants. This year, I decided to do the ground planting in an assembly line fashion, and I think it shaved some time off the process. The next step is to add a tablespoon each of blood meal and Epsom salt to each hole. The 
The blood meal is to give the plant a little nitrogen boost. This small amount serves another important function, which is to deter rabbits. They don't like the smell of blood, as to them it means predators are nearby. We have bunnies all over our yard, but they don't seem to bother the peppers. I credit the blood meal. You can always sprinkle extra around the plants, as needed. Epsom salt provides magnesium, a nutrient especially beneficial for peppers and tomatoes. You don't need to buy special Epsom salt packaged for gardening. You can get it at the drugstore. People often dissolve it in water to use as a soap to relieve aches and pains. Just make sure to buy the kind that's pure and unscented. I'm going to use the diluted Fischner liquid as a transplant fertilizer to reduce shock. The Dr. Earth product I used to use doesn't seem to be available anymore, so I'm trying this as an alternative. I'll add several ounces to each seedling as I put them in the ground. Now it was go time! I had selected the 41 plants, 16 for the square bed and 25 for the rectangular bed. I have some varieties that I plant in here every year and the rest I choose on the day of planting. Here's a chart I made up as a key. It gets hard to find some of the tags when things get crowded in here later in the season. Now here's a time lapse of the planting. I really wish I could actually move this quickly. Here's the view from the other side as I ham it up for my ta-da moment. Then I added some flowers to dress things up a bit. Next on the agenda, potting up six plants for our fish versus fowl challenge where we'll compare results using Fishner fish based fertilizer and sustain turkey based fertilizer. A dedicated video on this topic is coming soon. Ceramic, plastic and fabric pots began appearing in the garden as I continued the slow and seemingly never ending process of potting almost 200 plants. Temps were between 90 and 100 degrees Fahrenheit day after day with absolutely no precipitation. Very unusual weather for early June in Minnesota. Here I'm taking a moment to add a customary portulaca, otherwise known as moss rose, to each of these pots near the front of the house. Most of these young capsicum companions were not even blooming yet, so here's what it looks like several weeks later. Do you get a little lonely in that pot alone? Is there maybe space in there for two? My name is Portulaca and I'd like to be a capsicum companion just for A quick note about potting. I know I told you in an earlier episode to remove fabric seedling grow bags when transplanting and I stand by that, but in practice sometimes I only partially remove them. This is to avoid breaking off roots that are extending through the bottom of the bag. If they're just sticking out a little bit, I cut clean across the bag. In more delicate situations, I trim a little more carefully. Finally, fully two weeks after I started, I finished potting. I used the entire driveway pile of potting soil, plus eight large compressed bales of ProMix organic potting soil. A few labels went unused. I also had a few plants left over, so I put the word out on Facebook and Jared came by and picked them up the next day. Wouldn't want viable seedlings to go to waste if someone was willing to plant them. Oh, and we finally got some much needed rain. We could still use a lot more. I always worry this time of year that the garden isn't far enough along to ensure a good harvest in our short growing season. But rainwater always supercharges the plants, so I'm feeling a little more hopeful. Now it's finally time for that new song, accompanied by some footage of the garden that I shot yesterday evening. This song is a little more introspective than most of my compositions for this channel, but it definitely comes from the heart. Here's In the Summertime.
winters are so long here. Do I even belong here? When summer comes, it makes me smile, makes living through the freeze worthwhile. Colors change from gray and white to green, red, yellow, orange, purple, blue. Wisdom comes with age, but the days fly by so fast. Some you love now gone, try to make the memories last. Keep spreading joy to all of those who take the time to smell the roses in the summertime. I'm dancing in the moon, not knowing love will keep my garden growing in the summertime. My garden growing in the summertime. If you enjoy our content, you can help us grow by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and tapping the bell to be notified when we post new episodes. Check out all our Seven Pot Club logo and hot pepper related apparel and other merch at sevenpot.club/merch. If you'd like a free Seven Pot Club membership card and stickers, get the details at Seven Pot dot club slash card. And for even more Seven Pot Club, follow our daily exploits on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. For Seven Pot Club, I'm Rob.